Oh, for more on this, we want to bring it back in. NBC News senior White House correspondent Kelly O'Donnell. And she's joined by a senior fellow and military expert at Defense Priorities, retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Danny Davis. Thank you both for sticking with us for this. Stephen? So, Lieutenant Colonel Davis, strategically, how important is Bakhmud to Ukraine and what type of response do you expect to see from this? You know, the, the real issue with, with Bakhmut is not so much the, the tactical location, uh, because it's it's just one of many cities in the, in the area of Donetsk. But the, the bigger issue may have been that in order to try and hold on to the city, uh, Ukraine has for, for many months, really since December, I, I think, uh, many military experts were saying that they should have withdrawn to their next prepared level of defenses. But it, they decided to hold on to it. And, and in doing so, they have poured in many, many brigades of reinforcements to try and hold it, brigades that have now been lost and they are no longer available for their upcoming offensive. And so in that sense, the loss of Bakhmut may be much more significant to Ukraine because of the lack or the lesser offensive firepower they'll now have. Hmm. And uh, speaking of uh, firepower, Kelly, you mentioned earlier the F-16s. Uh, we also know the $375 million aid package from the U.S. But uh, regarding those fighter jets, this is something Ukraine has been asking for for such a long time. Do we know why the White House has sort of shifted their opinion on the international community providing these? Well, the National Security D Advisor, uh, Jake Sullivan, describes it as assessing different needs during the course of what has now become a very long war, 15, 16 months, and that they believe that there are different phases of that where different tools in the theater of war are more effective. The U.S. has clearly resisted that in part because they were concerned that F-16s, these very agile fighter jets, could escalate the conflict and be used uh, in a more offensive way against Russia, which could bring in others like NATO, like the United States into a wider conflict. The U.S. has not wanted that to be the case. And the president says he has gotten assurances from President Zelensky that uh, these jets and the support that the U.S. provides for them will only be used in a defensive way uh, to guard the skies over Ukraine and not widen the battlefield or make this conflict even more dangerous than it already has been. Stephen? So, Lieutenant Colonel Davis, just how effective do you think the F-16s can actually be for Ukraine? They've been on that wish list for such a long time now. Could this be a game changer? You know, that, that honestly, we got to keep a sober understanding of what this aircraft can do. And it is certainly an improvement over anything that they have, like the MiG-29s in the Ukraine Air Force. But it is not a game changer. Uh, the F-16s are, are very vulnerable to a Russian both their modern aircraft, the uh, MiG-31s and, and the Su-35s, as well as the S-400 uh, anti-aircraft systems. And they're certainly going to continue to be at risk anytime they go in the air, just like the MiG-29s have been up to this point. So I think we need to have a, an understanding that this is not going to be a game changer. It'll be an improvement, and certainly the Ukraine can use any improvement it can get, but we need to be clear out about this. All right. Kelly O'Donnell, Lieutenant Colonel Danny Davis, thank you both.